I've been waiting for this day and it's finally here. All the incoming freshman videos I've done was to eventually lead to this video. I wanted to have a video for each player so people can have a more in-depth look than a simple top 10 video. Unfortunately, there were two players I was not able to get to in time. I wanted to make sure to get this video out before the season because I don't want the advantage of hindsight. This won't be popular now, but I think this class will rival and maybe even beat the 2019 and 2020 class. There's a lot of hype and anticipation for the 2024 and 2025 class, but I think this one needs to be appreciated more. It will be a long time before there's another like it. One disclaimer I want to make is that just because someone isn't on this list doesn't mean I think they won't be good. It's a stacked class and there's only 10 spots. Somebody has to be left out. There's three things I looked for when I watched these players' pre-collegiate career. Eye test. How good do their abilities look compared to top players? I also look to see if they stand out when going against other top high school players. Last but not least, I look to see if their weaknesses are something that can be realistically improved upon. Before I get into the top 10, I want to go through some honorable mentions. Sierra Toomey is the fourth ranked recruit in the class. She's the highest ranked recruit that's not on my top 10. It's actually baffling how little coverage she's getting, especially compared to her ranking. I think she will be a good player, but I can't reasonably justify putting her over the 10 players I have who have proven themselves against tougher competition. Yeah, she can dominate Pennsylvania kids, but every top recruit dominates against their state. I would love to ask ESPN why they put her here. They believe she will be better than players like Hannah Hidalgo and Full Wiley. Maybe you guys can tell me. Am I missing something? Because when I compare her game to someone like Chloe Kitts, there's nothing that tells me she's the fourth ranked recruit. She did tear her ACL at some point in her high school career, which only makes me more nervous. Emma Rich is the best shooter in the 2023 class. She's a sniper and is going to a team that's perfect for her skill set. She shot 45% from three and 93% from the free throw line. There was a time she made nine threes in a row and scored 30 points in a quarter. She's literally doing Clay Thompson level feats. I would not be surprised if I regret not putting her on here. If there's anyone I would take out and put instead, it's Emma Rich without second thought. Easily the most controversial honorable mention is Alia Del Rosario. She's big and strong, but I just see a lot of red flags. Specifically her mobility, I think she can be a good player, but I don't like her over the 10 that I have. She will need a lot of development, I hope she gets it, but LSU is in win now mode, so I'm not too sure if she'll get the chance to get it. At number 10 I got Jaden Donovan, she is the number 3 recruit in the country. I definitely can't go that far, but I love her athleticism and her defense. She can lock up pretty much anyone and is going to a school that will maximize her defensive prowess. I'm not entirely sure if I trust Duke to develop her offensive game. It was limited in high school, but her athleticism and defense alone is enough to be on this list. I think a realistic projection for her is Veronica Burton, someone who can lock up any guard in the country and can give moderate production offensively. I don't think her ceiling is as high as other players on this list, but her floor is very good. Worst case scenario, she's an elite defender who can occasionally score on fast breaks. I would definitely take that. At number 9 I got Jada Williams. As I said in the previous video, she's going to the perfect environment for her. Seeing what Adia has done with 3 and 4 star recruits, I can only imagine what she'll do with 2 5 star players. Jada is a true 3 level scorer, and after Hidalgo I don't think anyone has more hustle than her. This will allow her to contribute on day 1. I don't think the adjustment period for Jada to translate to the college level will be very long. I see a lot of Alexis Morris in terms of her personality and her playstyle, a true point guard who can score when her team needs it the most. I think she will lead Arizona to great things. Coming in at number 8 is Cassandra Prosper. She was an early enrollee at Notre Dame. If Deion Sanders was a college basketball player, he would be Prosper. Her defense is so scary that towards the end season people would stop attempting to score on her. I give her the edge over Jaden Donovan in terms of defense because Prosper's defense has already proven to transfer to the college level. She was guarding the other team's best player in college and giving them work. If Prosper develops an offensive game in college like she has for Canada, she will be a Kawhi Leonard type of player. There's a decent chance in a few years this ranking might be too low. I'm being 100% serious when I say this. If I was Geno, I would not have AZ Fudd or Paige Beckers guard KK Arnold in practice. It's not safe. This girl is way too shifty when she starts dribbling everyone and their mom knows she's going to drive. And they can't stop it. She can blow by almost anyone. She's very hard to stop downhill because she'll either do a crafty layup or kick it out to another player. Normally her jump shooting should be an issue, but she's surrounded by a team that has nothing but shooters. 
She's not a superstar defender, but her lateral quickness ensures she won't be a defensive liability. I love her her slashing ability, but her jump shot leaves more to be desired. That's why I have her at number 7. At number 6, I have Brea Cunningham. Don't let her basic playstyle fool you. Sometimes old-fashioned is the way to go. Adia Barnes said Brea is a post player who actually likes playing post. This is exactly why I expect her to be dominant. She doesn't mind putting her back to the basket and getting physical. It also helps that she will be playing with Jada Williams, who she has developed great chemistry with over the years. In terms of interior paint defense, I trust her over anyone else in this recruiting class. She's one of the few players where I'm shocked if she gets scored on. It might not seem like it based off the things I have said about her, but I wasn't always high on Chloe Kitts. Reading some of the comments, it seems like there's people that still have doubts. But as someone who has felt the same way, I can say that Chloe is legit. I think the phrase saying a player can guard one guard one through five is overused. But Chloe is someone that can actually do it. The mobility she has at 6'2 is just ridiculous. Chloe Kitts is someone you take one look at and think she would get destroyed in the paint. But surprisingly, she is a brick wall. She reminds me of Cameron Brink. I have no idea where the strength comes from, but they aren't as easy to push around as you would think. They are a lot stronger than they look. Offensively, Chloe is dangerous. She is a matchup nightmare. Something that isn't talked about enough is how much she moves off the ball. Because of this, slow strong bigs aren't able to guard her. But quick guards are too small. Her mid-range is lethal, it's to the point you are shocked when she misses from there. As far as her potential goes, I think it heavily depends if Joyce Edwards becomes a Gamecock. Because Joyce is the same player but better, so she will be the main focus. I would love for Joyce to become a Gamecock and hope it happens, but it's far from the end of the world if it doesn't. Chloe's ceiling is almost just as high. If she improves her ball security, I don't think she will be on the bench very long. I said in multiple videos that there were three players that separated themselves from everyone else, even in an already stacked recruiting class. I'm honest enough to say that was a mistake. There's no way Malaysia Full Wiley isn't in that category. I know it sounds crazy to think there can be four generational players in the same class, and I felt the same way, but I can't deny what I'm seeing. I didn't have a channel at the time, but I would not have said this about the 2022 class. Kiki Rice was the number two recruit last year. If she was on this list, the highest I would put her is over KK Arnold and maybe Brea. In the 2021 class, the only players I would have called generational were AZ Fudd and Olivia Miles. I've watched a lot of college basketball, and I even went back and looked at some of the top players' high school films. I can't find anyone who matches these players. You have to look at NBA players to find comparisons, or find a current player and add skills to them. I'll use Michaela Williams, for example. I said she was Haley Jones with a three-point shot. How often do you see a player at Michaela's size move and shoot like her? Not very often. I'm very confident in the order I'm about to put these players in, but if someone wants to shuffle them around, I have zero problem with that. I don't know how anyone can watch Full Wiley and not have her at least top five. If you want to talk about eye tests, there's no one that looks more dangerous than Full Wiley. Maybe I'm forgetting someone, but I don't think I've ever seen someone with more hang time than Malaysia Full Wiley. Her ability to glide through the air is just ridiculous. When Malaysia is driving to the basket, you just have to hope she misses, because she's too skilled and athletic for shots to be blocked. People get scared of having their ankles taken or her driving, so they sag off. Unfortunately for them, Full Wiley is a shooter. She can make shots from deep, too. The reason I have Full Wiley at four is because I think out of the four generational talents, she definitely has the most flaws. She turns the ball over a lot, misses bunnies, and some of the shots she takes are worry me. I don't think any player has a more extreme floor versus ceiling. The chance is small, but there's the possibility she becomes a turnover machine, and her shots just end up being shacking a fool moments. But her ceiling is an athletic version of Caitlin Clark. I'm scared to even think about what that looks like. I think she will be in the middle of those two extremes and become a top 10 player in college basketball. At number three, I have Michaela Williams. Many people believe she's number one. I don't blame anyone for thinking that, but I can't put her any higher. If this was 2021 or 2022, I think she easily would be the best recruit. But Hidalgo and Juju are built different. I'll say this though, if you asked me to choose one class of 2023 player to take the last shot, it would be Michaela. I think she's the most unguardable player in the class, you just have to hope she misses. She has a long reach since she's 6'1", she's already physically stronger than most college players, and she can shoot from almost anywhere, how do you stop that? If Kim doesn't fumble like Tara Vanderveer, Michaela Williams will become a LSU legend. My biggest issue with Michaela is, what is she really doing for your team when she has an off shooting night? She's not a horrible defender, but I wouldn't call her a great one. She isn't an elite passer either, that's the deciding factor for me putting her three and not higher. 
I think this is the next major step she needs to take in her game. I do expect her to become better at these things and eventually become one of the best players in college basketball. I'm sticking with Juju at number one, but Hidalgo is really making me think no one has done more to prove they are ready for the next level more than Hidalgo. She broke Sabrina's Aneskis McDonald's All-American points record. She wasn't really forcing any shots either, and if that wasn't good enough, she tied the steals record in the same game. She also dominated the under-19 FIBA tournament and had the best exhibition game out of any current player in college basketball. But here's what makes Hidalgo generational. Her stealing and passing ability is so potent that she can have a terrible shooting night and still be the best player on the floor. In the FIBA championship, she only shot two for seven. But she had a plus minus of 15 in a game they only won by three points. Name a player who can shoot under 30% from the field and still be the best player in the same game. The value she adds to a team can't be exaggerated. Hannah Hidalgo's exhibition game is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. A lot of people aren't aware because the game wasn't televised, but she scored 23 points, had seven steals and five assists. Did you think that was good? She did it on only nine shots in 24 minutes. You can say what you want about competition, that's an impossible stat line. I am a huge believer in Juju Watkins, but if you asked me if she could do that, I would say no. What the heck is her ceiling? I don't expect her to have that level of efficiency, but she easily can have games where she scores over 20 points, 5 steals, and 5 assists. Let's go back to the FIBA Cup real quick. If you look at the American players who made the All-Star 5 since 2011, the worst player is Sonia Citron. Who is what? At least a top 20 player? The best player was, well, y'all see the people on the screen. Hidalgo is going to destroy the ACC, and it's going to happen a lot quicker than people think. I've seen Full Wiley, Michaela, and Hidalgo do some crazy things in the past few months, but I'm sticking with my gut, and my gut says Juju will still be the best player in the class. It's easy to counter out because we haven't seen her play since the All-American game, but she's still Juju. The thing about Juju is that she isn't the best at anything. She's not the best shooter in the class. She's not the best ball handler. She isn't the best defender or passer. Rather, she's a jack of all trades and master of all. She's 6'2", mobile, and decently athletic. She uses that to fuel every single part of her game. When it comes to scoring, you can play perfect defense against her and it doesn't matter. She can shoot over anyone and is not afraid to take it to the rack. Your only real hope is to steal the ball or hope she misses it. I can't tell you how many times I watched her play and the defense just starts whacking her because they can't guard her. USC is one of the best defensive teams in basketball, and now they are adding another player who is great at it. She uses her length both when guarding on ball and to block shots. An underrated part of her game is her rebounding. She gets the rebounding stats of post players. She is relentless on the boards as she is with other parts of her game. But the deciding factor for me isn't the talent. I mean, everyone has talent. It's her mindset. She was getting offers from literally everywhere. She easily could have gone to a team and got an easy ring and a bunch of clout. She will be the best player in the class because she has to be for USC to be relevant. She isn't able to coast behind other elite players. We've seen similar situations elevate a player's game. Juju Watkins' first year will be just like Caitlin Clark's. Juju is going to have some bad games this year. Her first will most likely be against Ohio State. It's set up for her to fail. It's her first time playing organized basketball in several months. She's going against a defensive player of the year and the best press defense in country. People will come back to this video and say, I told you that clutch sports fraud was overhyped. People forget how Veronica Burton completely humiliated Caitlin Clark her first year on national television. The same will happen with Juju. She will get trashed anytime she has a bad game, but then when she drops 20 and 10, the next game you won't hear anything from those people. Just wait and see. That wraps up this top 10 video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was months in the making. There are two class of 2024 players I want to talk about before the year ends, but the rest of the players will come during the college off season. I feel very confident about my choices. I choose them very carefully. I'm curious what opinions everyone has on the incoming freshmen. Who do you believe will be the best? Is there someone you think I missed or someone's spot you would move around? As always, thanks for watching.